In this video, I'll discuss packet filtering firewalls. Packet filtering firewalls are also called Layer 4 firewalls. This is because they are designed to examine packet headers, specifically things like UDP and TCP headers, which map to Layer 4 of the OSI model. So therefore, a packet filtering firewall cannot examine packet payload. It can't look at the actual data, such as a specific URL that the user is connecting to or a specific HTTP GET request. So therefore, there are restrictions for certain website or data within packets that are simply not possible with packet filtering firewalls. Packet filtering firewalls can be stateless, where each individual packet is seen as a separate connection. Also, a packet filtering firewall might be stateful, where it tracks packets within a session. When we configure a packet filtering firewall, we allow or deny traffic based on criteria, which includes things such as an IP protocol ID, which implies what type of packet this really is, or a source and destination IP address, that specifically would apply to layer three of the OSI model. We might also have a source and destination port number, an ICMP message type, IP options and flags, and so on. Pictured on the screen, we've got a red arrow pointing to the headers within a packet capture. The headers begin with the Ethernet 2 header, which is containing information such as the source and destination MAC address. We then see the Internet Protocol, or IP header, which among other things contains the source and destination IP address. We can also see the Transmission Control Protocol header here in our screenshot, the TCP header, which among other things, shows us the source and destination port for the connection, as well as things like sequence and acknowledge numbers. Finally, we can also see the hypertext transfer protocol header, which is selected, but down at the bottom in this packet capture, we see the actual hexadecimal representation of that data or payload on the left, and the ASCII equivalent on the right. So a packet filtering firewall will not be able to go in and read that payload as we see it at the bottom of the screen. So again, it can't take a look at a file that a user requested from a website. So a packet filtering firewall then really applies to layers three and four. So when we say it's a layer four firewall, it applies layers underneath it like three. It can deal with protocol types, IP addresses, port numbers, and so on. In our example on the screen, we've got three firewall rules. The first rule is an SSH TCP port 22 rule to allow SSH remote administration traffic. We can see that we can specify a source, which in this case is an entire subnet, 172.16.0.0 slash 16. And of course, our rule is set to allow. Below it, we are allowing HTTPS port 443 traffic from any source. And our last rule here is denying all traffic from all sources. Common packet filtering firewall products include configuring network access control lists or ACLs on your router, whether you're using a Juniper or Cisco router. You can also configure the Windows firewall solution, or you could use the Linux and Unix IP tables command, or any newer derivative such as the firewall D daemon. Or you might use other tools such as Checkpoint Firewall 1. The list goes on and on and on. In this video, we discussed packet filtering firewalls.